Welcome to Engineering Scale Models. I'm Jason, your host, and today we're going to look at some books. Um, what do I use for reference on my bench for some for some books for electronics and stuff like this? First, I like to talk about what I do notes wise. I take a lot of notes for reference, and I like to use these engineering books. Um, I put the camera on, you'd see them. These are engineering books. These have grid paper in them, and you can write in them. And they have a nice table of contents in the front here. Um, nice table of contents. And you can just, I mean, all scattered out through here, I got different logic. This is my logic book. Um, I also have one for schematics and stuff. These are, these are great. Um, here's a barcode if you guys want to get one. Um, it's a Vila Pro Cover. Um, let's see. What does it say? Does it say anything about the book? Um, it's an instructions for a lab notebook. And it talks about general purposes of a lab notebook. I don't follow any of these, but it's good to take notes and then, you know, I can show, I can go back and see how I was thinking and see how that was, how I did something. So, I have two of those. Um, I have one that's full, and then I have two that I'm currently working in. Um, and then I have um, these two books here. Yeah, these two little fold-out laminated things. This is Electronics Part 1. It talks about different devices. Um, just a, you know, bipolar junctions. Uh, looks like some MOSFET stuff. Um, no, these are all transistors, MOSFETs, let's be on the next one. Um, and then we have a common emitter amplifier, a nice long section of stuff. And then, you know, we got common base amplifier, common collector amplifier, transistor as a switch, uh, differential amplifiers. So th this is pretty good, it, it's got a good amount of stuff on it. And then they have a part two that um, talks about... Um, Amp just using different kinds of of chips. I believe these are op amps right here. Um, we got uh, field effect transistors. Uh, then we got some MOSFET operation. How the MOSFET is designed. It's just a it's just a good reference material if you need some reference material. Here's some more stuff on how MOSFETs, um, you can use those to create amplifiers. <coughs> and then we got some JFETs and MOSFET, MOSFETs over here. And then we got another section on op amps. And then I have circuit analysis. This is good if you need, if you are confused on how a circuit works. This has your resistance and conductance, Ohm's law, open and short circuits, Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. I always have to refer back to those. Um, series and parallel circuits, series circuit dividers and current dividers, and then we got some analysis and method, methods with the nodal analysis. Um, then we have just inductors, capacitors, solenoid power, impedance and emittance, uh, frequency response, just a just a abundant amount of information and they are these are available for pretty cheap um, I want one for schematic symbols but I can't I can't seem to find one and they're three hole punched if you want to put them in a binder and that's quick reference I got my notes and then I got that and then I have um, these two make electronics by Charles Platt um, these are pretty good, um, just general information about circuits you can build, like if you have a component you can look through here and you can see an example circuit of how that component works. Um, I have the first one and the second one, um, this is the next one. This, one, this one talks a lot about logic, so that's why um, I use it as a good reference. So it's pretty good and he even makes like a little breadboard thing here um, so you know you can create a telepathy tester um, 
you know, using a rational encoder or thermistor to achieve randomicity. Let's see what we got here. And then this is just, you know, your basic basic projects you can do. And, and, there, and it is fun. It's, it's a good read. Um, I, I've showed some of the stuff in the beginning of this one on, on camera. And I'm going to show a little bit more what's in this books in a minute. Now, for component reference, I have Encyclopedia 1, 2, and 3 of the make by um, Charles Platt and then on some of these is uh, Frederick Jansen but uh, volume one covers resistors, capacitors, inductors, switches, encoders, relays, and transistors this is a wealth of knowledge on how these components work so if you are having a you know issue like here is how a bypass capacitor works so you have the pulse input, pulse output, and you know with the bypass capacitor it gives you a shorter, narrower pulse. So we have here potentiometers, um, inline resistors. I love inline resistor packages. You know, there's just a just a wealth of knowledge. We got some dip switches here, but. Um, these are just a wealth of knowledge and it's it's not that much for all three books and if you're going to mess around with electronic components at least if you want to do basic stuff uh, volume one with the understanding of resistors capacitors inductors just those three alone will give you a lot of basic knowledge of electronics and then having transistors in there is very helpful then you know encoders, relays, and switches is good if you want to make some stuff that turns some stuff on. And then you have number two, which is your LEDs, your LTDs, audio, thyristors, digital logic, and application. This is, falls more into what I do with the digital logic and LEDs, and uh, I don't really mess with audio and LCDs. Uh, thyristor is normally used for working with mains electricity. I try to avoid mains electricity at all costs not a fan of it but there's I mean it's just a wealth of knowledge in here some flip-flops counter circuits um, seven segment displays on how to make them work um, just again it's it's a wealth of knowledge here's some LED displays you know some more stuff on getting them to work so how, how a seven segment decoder works that's you know, that's a 45, 43. Um, I'm not sure what that is. I'm pretty sure it's a CMOS chip. Yeah, it takes 5 to 18 volts. It's a CMOS chip. Now, there's some things it doesn't specify. It just gives you a part number, then you got to go hunt down the data sheet. But like I said, you know, you can you can find a con you know equivalent in you know a 4000 series or a um, TTL chip from the 74 series because they have the HC series which is a form of CMOS and then you have number three which is all about sensors and um, this is it, this is pretty good um, it does cover some things like rotary encoders again um, and then you have you know tilt sensors um, gyroscopes liquid level sensors um, NTC thermistors, um, temperature sensors. So this one is is the thinnest book and my least used book. Um, you know, I I reference it for some things, but I don't I don't use a lot of sensors. I like to keep my stuff simple. But in the traffic lights project, I I'm probably gonna dip into here and you know get into some sensors and you know get some values maybe from a PIR or whatnot to see a car pulling up or whatnot and things like that but let's take a look at this first book here and take a look at what's in here and I'll show you something that I do if you look here in here I have stuff that's highlighted this is mainly if I if I do a video, I have points that jump out to me, so I'm not just reading word for word. But you know, it it starts out 
you know, it, it starts out very simple, you know. Most people that are going to jump into electronics, let's see if I can fix this lighting. You know, most people that jump into electronics are not, are going to know some basic stuff, but you know if you're working on some scale models, and well, I cannot I cannot do anything about that lighting. Wow, if you're working on scale models and you've never you never worked with electronics, and somebody tells you, oh, you you know you want to put some lights in your aircraft carrier or your or your tank or your aircraft man just just get yourself a microcontroller and some LEDs you know and learn how to program an Arduino and, and and wire it up and you know you know once you build it on a big board transfer it to a small board and that that can be daunting I you jump into something you've never done before you know you you skip over the basic electronics on how things work and you and you you know, having to learn how to code, or you're copying somebody's code, and then it, it never does exactly what you want it to do. But if you if you learn a basic knowledge of the electronics, you can experiment based on the parameters that you've learned in basic electronics, and then you can adapt it to yourself. And that's what that's what I'm doing with with the traffic light project. Now I have the traffic light project here and it works if I plug a 9 volt supply into this I do no nope, I do have a 9 volt supply right here or 5 volt supply I'm sorry let me turn on my power supply here uh, channel 2 if I take this up to 5 volts I mean this should work it's still programmed I take that to 5 volts and do it at 200 milliamps. Um, you know, I got this power supply. It's the 3303X E, and it only has 10 millivolts, 10 milliamps resolution. I really wish I would have paid the extra or you asked for the extra and tried to buy the the X version that has the one milliamp one millivolt so I'm gonna plug this into my Adreno here and I'm gonna turn this on and hopefully not blow anything up yeah it turns on look at that so if I, I can adjust this um, I don't know what but it, it's hard to see you can see the greens on that side's red and it's it's moving it's moving pretty fast but I can I can turn the potentiometer and I can make the green cycle longer the yellow cycle will always be the same but you know this is this is a simple project this isn't that hard but it does take it does take an aspect of coding in the Adreno that is you know be beyond beginner you know with the functions and the interrupts and things like that and, and I'm trying to explain that and teach that you know, I have a video week coming out on this project. So, it, it seems like a simple, basic project, but, you know, I feel like when I explain this to people, I'm glancing over what the basic electronics are. So, I, I want people to understand what basic electronics are. And there are a numerous, fantastic number of channels out there that focus solely on electronics, and I'm going to focus more on just using them in in scale modeling, so very low current, very small circuit packages, eventually using um, surface mount and things like that. But let's let's put the traffic lights up here. Oh, that power supply is already working out. Okay, let's put the traffic lights back up. <coughs> and now let's look at something I used basic electronics for that I didn't um, use a microcontroller. I actually could have used a microcontroller and this has been featured in other videos. This is my little code crack game. Um, I need 9 volts for this so we'll go channel 1.
No, I definitely need 5 volts. Yeah, so I'm going to use channel 3. Yeah, I almost, almost ruined that. I don't like this breadboard because the other breadboards can have a um, get my plugs out of here and I'll talk about what I was talking about. This breadboard here that I use in my Logic series has this power adapter here that I can plug this in, plug into here, and I plug 9 volts in, it converts it down to 5 or 3.3, and it powers the whole board, and I can have multiple different levels of circuitry on it, it's very nice. This board here, I do have it soldered in to these two rails right here, and I just, you know, plug my banana jacks in like this, and I can have power, but if I wanted to use one of these power adapters it doesn't fit this isn't a standard breadboard size and I was confused because when I first got it 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 worked but it seemed like on all the chips and all the parts I had to splay the legs further than necessary and then you know when I would take a chip out and put it in a different breadboard it wouldn't fit it would be all messed up and then like 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 buttons you know once they get out of form they don't stick in the board anymore and when I would take a button from here to my logic breadboard it would be ruined and I would have to use a new button and then I, that's when I discovered that this is a larger size breadboard I don't even see I, the only time I see this size is you know in this in this kit and you know, I got the kit. I thought it was nice. It has a riser, but it didn't work out as well as I thought. But it's the only two large breadboards I have, and currently I have to use this. But this circuit, that circuit takes 9 volts, and this circuit takes 5, so I have to make sure that I am, you know, swapping around. Back when I had one power supply, and it didn't have an on-off for the output, if I would have put 9 volts into here, I would have, I would have fried my chips. So I had to constantly leave it unplugged to change the voltage to make sure everything was right. But this is nice. It has a dedicated output on channel 3. So I'm going to turn that on. That's my 5 volts. So this is 5 volts. And then I can shift in zeros, shift in 1s. You know, I can make it do all these cool things with this rotary encoder. <clears throat> in this, um, a rotary encoder, <coughs> excuse me, a rotary encoder is used primarily with a microcontroller, and you, you know you decode the um, decode the data and clock pin or A and B channel. But I used uh, my basic knowledge of electronics of some capacitors and resistors, and a couple simple logic ICs. This logic IC is just an inverter. It just inverts the signal. There's no, there's no complicated logic in there. If you, it, if you tried to draw it with some transistors, even then it's only, I believe it's only one transistor in a inverter circuit. So you could even build it with a, you know, a discrete transistor. You know, if you, if you know the basics, but if you don't want to get that far into the basics of logic, you can use logic chips, and you know, you can get logic chips that do tons of different things. I have a logic series on the channel that I'm working through. I'm working for the 74 series and the CMOS uh, 4000 series. Then I might add to that. I, I like doing the logic series. I like, you know, knowing what all the chips do and you know being able to pick and choose without having to do a search about what I want. So, and this is a, a 74 HC 595 shift register. So I'm basically just shifting in data um, from these two pins on based on how they work. But I was able to design this because I had a basic knowledge of electronics. Now I could take this whole thing and use an Arduino to do this exact thing, a microcontroller, and then I would have to program it and spend time programming it. But you know, say I didn't want to, I didn't want to learn programming. I could, you know, I use my basic electronical knowledge to build this circuit out of discrete parts and for the most part it works it's a code crack game 
we're going to put a master code here that you have to match we're going to put a timer on it you know we're going to do all kinds of cool things and then we're probably going to just transfer everything to a box and a breadboard and have a little game in a box and it's not going to have to have a microcontroller it's going to be able to be ran off a usb power supply i'll just put a usb power supply in it and or i can put a you know a five mil uh, jack in there and we can power it with a with a battery I, I can put a voltage regulator so we can power it with a 9 volt battery you know I could do any any sort of thing like that and have this little game you know I built it for my son because I wanted to show him that you know you can build things without having to have a microcontroller you can do things without a microcontroller and then this was you know the shift register has a clock pin and it has to clock in data with a high and a low and a data pin that needs a high and a low to send the data and it just so happens that turning the rotary encoder sends out um, two, two inverted clock pulses and then by inverting them through this chip I get two clock pulses that are happen to be offset from each other depending on the direction you turn it so turning it one way inputs a zero and turning it the other way inputs a one I have other videos on this I don't want to get in too much more detail but um, this was accomplished by basic electronic knowledge it didn't work at first you know I just tried inverting it that didn't work and then I needed to build um, a couple RC circuits to take out the bounce and it, it worked great after that so it it worked fantastic after that so and I, I didn't have any more issues um, it does have a hidden bit but you know we're starting to think that the hidden bit is not a downfall it just makes it it makes it a little bit more difficult which it is a code crack game so difficulty is key you know and we can expand on that with no microcontroller we can use you know we could put some memory in it and it could it could use a counter every time you you matched a circuit you you leveled up and it, it outputs another code from the memory and you could you know try to get through all the levels and things like that and all this is stuff you can learn from a you know basic electronics book um, this covers most of everything I did in there it may not go into the exact chips you need but it covers, you know, how RC circuits work, how inverters work, some basic logic. Um, I don't know if it covers a shift register, but um, there's tons of information out there on shift registers. It's a very, very common chip. It's up there with the 555 timer. And um, another thing is on my logic board here. Let me grab that out. On my logic board, I have my logic circuits. This happens to be a D latch. See, this is one of the switches that I stuck on the other board, and now it's messed up. Now I'm not going to get this in the right spot. You're going to see me playing around with stuff again, guys. Sorry. Probably be best to just put another one of these cheap buttons. You get like. Hopefully that's stuck on there. And I, I spent all that time putting that button on there, and I'm about to take this circuit off and move on to the next circuit. But a lot of times when you're working with logic, you have you have uh, logic chips that need a clock input, and a lot of people think that, oh, I need a clock input, I need a computer or a crystal oscillator or things like that. Well, you know, some basic electronics, you know, a 555 timer, like in this circuit here and I'll power this I'll power this back up 
as soon as I turn it back to 9 volts. 9 volts. So I'll power this back up, if I powered it up in the first place. I'll power this back up and watch up here with this light right here. Hopefully you can see this LED. And it'll, it'll start flashing. And that is a simple clock circuit that I built. And I have a um, pretty high resistor in there because the light's not lighting very bright. But um, I actually was driving it without a, a resistor for a little bit on accident. Um, and if I can move this potentiometer here, right there, I can make it slower. And it's real slow now. And then I can turn it this way make it faster and faster and so fast you can't even see it going on and off so if you you know you need a clock signal a temporary clock signal you don't need an arbitrary wave generator you know I use that for the same for clock signals but you know you can use basic simple electronics this is a 555 timer a potentiometer a resistor and two two capacitors, an LED, and another resistor. And it's, it's a basic simple circuit. You can go on the on YouTube and you can go, hey, I need a 555 timer, um, an A-stable multivibrator mode, and there'll be a hundred videos on how to build this circuit. Um, some people use different values of the capacitors that will change the um, the pulse, the, the wave type, the pulse type, it'll always be a square pulse, square wave but it'll change some of the some of the timing of it. Um, I use a 2 meg um, pot and uh, what do I use in that? That is a oh, 1 microfarad um, capacitor. So, and then I just have a um, tiny little capacitor over here. I'm not sure what that is. I think it's something microfarad. And then over here, if I just need a single clock pulse, I have another 5.5 five timer set up in monostable mode and I just press the button and I get a clock pulse you know if it, it basically debalances the switch so I press it I get a clock pulse now I could have used something like this to debounce the clock pulse in my rotary encoder but this is you know that setting multiple clock pulses and I don't want this to send multiple ever so this works great if you know if I double click it and if I do realize that it is too sensitive and I'm getting you know two pulses out of it I can change the value of my capacitors and you know get that get that pulse a little just more more a longer pulse or but I like a quick little pulse so that's a little you know this is a little clock module it fits on you know half a breadboard definitely half a breadboard if you take off the this this type power supply but I always end up having a base set of circuits up here um, a base set of clock signals and then I work on these three boards for my project just in case I need to bring something in from a 555 timer so I normally have this all the way over here and then sometimes I use a counter circuit over here um, it's not set up right now but sometimes I use a counter circuit over here and I can pull a signal from any of these outputs and put it into my circuit to test things and it, and it comes in handy so like this is a D latch so then I, I latch the D button in still there if I want to clear it I clear it and then I can't latch it in it's latched in this is just a D latch there's a video on this but you know this is all simple basic electronics this is just simple basic logic um, I believe it's uh, inverter and gates and I know it's an inverter and gates and nor gates but I'm trying to do the order I believe this is the inverter this is the and and this is the nor gates and I'm just using you know one inverter two and gates and two nor gates I would read the number on the chip, but I can't see that. I need a magnifier. So, and I don't want to stick my head all up under the camera. I'm sure you don't want to see that. 
So that is, you know, another simple circuit that um, you could you could have on, you know, with basic electronics, no microcontroller needed. You could have a clock signal and all that stuff. Now I'll tell you something interesting about this Siglet power supply. Let's go to this view real quick and I'll show you this right here. Okay, why is that not moving? Okay, you see this power supply right there? Try to get it into shot. Okay, if I have channel 2 on, right? Put on channel 2, the channel 2 lights lit. Sorry about the, the glare. Okay, so I have channel 1 set for 9 volts, and I turned on channel 2. Now you would think if I hit the all off, they would all turn off, but no, they turn on first. So if you have one on and you want to turn turning them all on off, turns them all on first, and then turns them off. So just have to use the individual channels. So that's just a little, little tidbit there on that. So go back to this camera here. So we'll put the circuits away, uh, but that is basic electronics. In another shop talk, I went over what basic electronics I keep on my bench. This one is about reference material. But, you know, you can go through these and, you know, it, it goes into, here's a 555 timer in this book talking about 555 timer. Um, you know, and different different things you can do. Um, you know, here's different things. You know, with different logic, three part circuit. You know, here's the five 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 timer again. You know, um, wow, three five five fives. What are they doing? Reflex timer. I'm not sure. Drive in um, seven segment displays. But it, it gets into, you know, it starts out super easy. You know, it starts out, you know, talking about resistors, how resistors work, how potentiometers, how to use your meter to read, or re read resistors. You know, it starts out really simple, and I go through the first couple of this in the in, in my in what video, but it is not um, good quality. I didn't have the multiple camera angles and things that I have now. It's not like these are good quality. But, um, you know, it talks about watts, you know, you got, you build a battery out of some lemon juice, you know, fun stuff like that. It gives the water analogy for current and batteries, and then it, you know, goes into switches and some tools, got some different pliers, you know, breadboards, different wires, solid core, stranded, there is a difference, um, jumper wires, and then it starts with the switches. And then it talks about transistors because transistors can be used for a switch. It talks about the 2N222, which is what I mainly carry. Um, and then you have the internal resistance. You got talking about a loudspeaker. Um, again, master, you know, huge double pole, single pole type switches. Um, and how to measure uh, continuity on your meter. And it goes into, you know, different symbols for a battery, um, different just power supplies in, different types of ground, um, depending on your fancy. I, I, I believe this one is more of an earth ground, and this is more of an electronic ground. Um, I believe this may be a floating ground. It doesn't say. Yeah, it doesn't tell you if that's a floating ground. No, it doesn't tell you if one's a floating, but I, you know, if I recall, this is a floating ground, and this is an earth ground, which an earth ground would be plugged into, you know, like your earth ground on your power supply. Actually, I can turn that off. Now. So, you know, then we, you know, more about resistors, and then you know, investigating relays, you know, relays. A lot of people like, you know, turning things on and off with a relay. You know, you have, you know, the relay connected to mains power and you want to use a little electronic switch to turn it on 
at a certain time or turn it off at a certain time or when you press a button to turn it on and off you know relays are great for that so and then the inside of a relay so you don't have to take yours apart and then we have a uh, beginner board you know with some relays 9 volt battery you know a nice little circuit you can make yourself and then we have just a whole bunch more chips and then we get into how the diagram of a breadboard works and you know 9 volt battery relay and we got a capacitor going across there and you can buy kits that go with um, this make electronics book let me show you one of those like this right here this is this is kit one of three for this make electronics and this covers experiment one through eleven so I bet you there's a relay in here I mean it comes with a whole bunch of components this is capacitors ceramic capacitors does this do this the, the, the one with the yep there's the relay 9 volt DC relay right there so it comes with the relay experiment so maybe I'll stop this video and then do that in a video a bladed fuse all that good stuff so maybe I'll do some of these experiments from here so you want to see me do some basic experiments and do this thing as a video, long video or should I end it here I'm going to end it here and then I'm going to do some experiments from this that I can do just from this kit not the lemon battery thing so let's let, let's do that let's just play around today so I'm going to stop this video here thank you guys for watching you can visit me on these social media links you can also support me on patreon um, any little bit helps and it is um, allows me to get more equipment and things like that to do more things now let us end it here guys thank you so